I want to start off by saying thank you for subscribing. Uh, I am not sponsored by Alaska, but I'd like to be. I'm back in Portland and I'm sitting in the double decker bus. Uh, last week I talked a little bit about the potential projects that I have coming up and how I think about them. Uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about the language that I use around coming up with what's next. Words that I like to use are manifestation and the universe. They're a little bit woo woo, but um, they work for me to explain like everything as a big mysterious whole that I have no control over, but am open to hearing what's out there and saying yes to at least having a conversation with somebody um, to see where something might go. The places that I learned this from are Eckhart Tolle and his book, The Power of Now, and Michael Singer and his book, The Surrender Experiment. A few years back when I read The Surrender Experiment, I decided that what I would do is try to say yes to whatever the universe was presenting to me. And because of that, a long line of things have kind of come my way and they've been really fun, including finding this bus, finding a new home for the tiny houses, pretty much every project I've had since then. And this also includes new friends that I've met and potential future projects. Also, looking back at last week, Dave and I have continued our conversations about looking for airstreams. And, you know, one of the problems we're bumping into is not knowing where we'll build. Interestingly enough, a friend introduced me to his cousin-in-law. She reached out and said that they are looking for a person to help them build out a mobile cannabis cafe in Austin. They already picked out their school bus and they just need somebody to help them renovate it. And, you know, I let them know that I didn't have a space, but that I'd be happy to have a conversation with them about their bus. And things have progressed pretty quickly, honestly. Next time I'm out in Austin, I'm going to go check out their bus and the land that I'd be building on. And they said that any future projects that I had, I could also build out on that land. So just right there, we may have solved the problem of where we will build the Airstream. Recently, my friend Kristen reached out to me and asked if I could help her with a few remodels on her van. Uh, this was really exciting because it was the first van that I worked on after getting my van and doing a little work on it. I had just started at a shop called Just Roaming and in that van I did a ton of things. I helped build the walls out, uh, I tiled, I did trim work, I put in the floor. When Kristen first came, we got inside of it and talked about redoing the countertops and adding a little table for them to sit at, um, cleaning up some of the trim. But when we got to talking um, about how her and her partner, Carolee, used the space, we determined that taking out a wall, which seemed like a really big project, would create a lot of space for them in their van. And so we added taking out the wall and adding a swivel seat into her space. My biggest concern when it comes to the wall is that the flooring actually stops right there at the wall. Yeah. So like how to do something cool. I was even thinking, Maybe trying to find some tile mm. and make like a, yeah. like a wet room. That's a cool idea. Yeah, I thought that would look really cool. If possible, to create like a tiny little like spice shelf. Oh, interesting. Thing. Yeah. Yeah, if the wood could like maybe match this. Maybe, yeah. Like that's... I mean, we did great work in that van to see how it's held up over three years, but then to come in and see how my skill and my confidence has gone up over the last three years has been really cool. When we met, I had just finished my van. Yep. Got hired to work at a shop where they were working on this van. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Was this your first van? This was my second. All right. So I sold my first one. My first one was a medium roof and this one is a high roof. Okay. And that was the big difference. My first van, I had almost no storage. So it's honestly kind of amazing to see from then to now, how yeah. much stuff. Getting the opportunity to work on the van again and help make it comfortable for her current situation was something I was very excited to be a part of. Hey, I'm Kristen. I've been on the road for about, no, over four years now. It's definitely over four years. Uh, this is my second van, my second little tiny home on wheels. I travel full-time with my partner, Carolee, now and um, our two dogs. And you can find me on Instagram or TikTok at Where the Road Forks. Yeah.
I'm so happy. <laughs> when I met you three years ago, mm -hmm. you were working for a company out of your van, right? Yes, so I was working a full-time corporate job still. Yeah. When I hit the road, I was part-time. My biggest mistake was advocating for me to go full-time because mm. I wanted more money. The opportunity to sit down and have a, a conversation about what she's learned over the last three years was so awesome. So I basically have brand deals and I create content for them. I at least have a two-year contract right now with Backcountry, so it's great because that pays the bills and then any other brand deals I get on top of that is kind of like fun money. But you have yeah. a house, right? Yes. I don't like look at my house in Indianapolis, which I run as an Airbnb. Uh -huh. I don't look at that as profit or money coming in because it's like out of sight, out of mind. And it is strictly a savings account for me. I find that part to be interesting because it's um, sort of investing in your future, right? Yeah, it pays for the mortgage, the cleaning fees, the the bills and whatever that are associated with it. So I kind of look at my house like my 401k plan okay. because other people are paying into my equity and every now and then, yes, I do put some money into it. I'm not making a YouTube account that's about like the value of houses, right? but I am interested in how people like you and I think about our finances yeah. and where we're making money and what it's paying for and how we look at the future. I guess like I want to like make sure people know like it is not so easy as being like just go buy a house right and then yeah. Airbnb it like I had to dip drastically into my 401k yeah. in order to afford the down payment on mm -hmm. the house but I saw the risk versus reward was yeah. worth it so all that to say that my Airbnb helps me save without actually having to put money into it it was super fun getting to talk to Kristen about content creation um, different types of videos and when to use them. People who know me know that I had a small Instagram, mm -hmm. it blew up. People started asking if I had a YouTube channel and I was like, no, but I have in the past, I can do this. Right. Instagram has the potential for advertising and brand deals, mm -hmm. uh, whereas YouTube has maybe more passive income from however it works. Yeah. Magic. Yeah. Um, what are your thoughts on brand deals? So brand deals are such a great way for people to make money on the road. And the interesting thing is you don't need, so I think what you're up to 140,000 now, you don't need anywhere near that in order to start making money. I started making money off of my Instagram at around 10,000 followers. But that being said, I could have started much earlier had I had the tools to do so. There's so many social media coaches like on Instagram now. I highly recommend like investing in a course if that is something that you like definitely want to go down like a path that you want to do and I, I always knew I wanted to get paid to travel. When it comes to a social media following people who have less followers actually have a, um, a better engagement rate which means that if a brand if their mission is to sell more products they're gonna probably go with micro influencers mm -hmm. because they have a stronger influential power over their audience. Yeah. Whereas someone over 100,000 doesn't have quite as strong as an influential power. However, they are getting the word out more. Yeah. So when it comes to someone with a higher following such as yourself, it's gonna be more of the brand visibility yeah. that they're looking for, nice. not necessarily like a rate of return. And the thing that a lot of people forget is these are companies with huge marketing budgets. Yes, you're occasionally gonna have your mom and pop shop. Like for example, my window coverings that I use, I, if they reached out to me, I would probably in a heartbeat do it for trade because I know that they're very small owned. I know that their work is really good. Uh, Van Made Gear is the company, so like, I'll do some free stuff. Um, <laughs> yeah. Like that's a company I would do trade for just because I believe in them. Yep. I, I have purchased their stuff, mm -hmm. so I know it's good quality. But if we're looking at a company like I work with, Backcountry, yeah. I'm going to get paid for that because I know that they have the marketing budget. And when you're creating content for these brands, you got to think, you're the, you're the photographer, you're the stylist. Come with me to hike the popular Skyline Trail in Mount Rainier National Park. This trail is about five and a half miles long and 1,700 foot elevation gain. This gorgeous Myrtle Falls will be the first thing you see if you go counterclockwise. 
So for me, when I go out and I do like a hike with me video, yeah. the amount of people that would go into hiring that if they were to do it like in house, yeah. the money's there. And I always say like aim high and let them bring you down when yeah. it comes to rates. Sure. What are resources that you recommend I look for? There's so many content creators out there that offer resources on here's like a brand pitch template you know kind of what you should say what you shouldn't say beacons also has a a new ai generated brand pitching tool so you basically like type in the company you want to pitch to it generates an email pitch for you to send to the company it was super fun getting to talk to Kristen about content creation, different types of videos and when to use them. So my content has been quick videos that show my builds. Right. Sometimes it's like just a tiny little section of a build. Sometimes it's a start to finish build and mm -hmm. now I'm doing uh, these YouTube videos. Do you have any thoughts about yeah. my content? So I think the quick video formats are such a good way to like draw people in, but then they need a reason to stay and like want to like follow your journey yeah. you do have to include content that might not be so exciting to you but to where people can learn from you yeah. and I think if they have that learning piece on top of like falling in love with you and your personality and things like that that's what's going to make them stay yeah. but you kind of have to like bring people in and give them something worth sticking around for sure anything I didn't ask that we want to be sure to touch upon if anybody's looking for a van project, you should definitely check out WIT. <laughs> oh, thanks. <laughs> Honestly, though, being here in Portland is, like, so much fun. Supporting us. Okay. Hugging goodbye. Bye. 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 So good. Oh, <laughs> Thank you so much for all your Thank hard work. You. So in Portland this week, uh, my friend Alice and I have been talking for over a year now about potential projects to do. And we started looking again for a sprinter van out here for me to convert for her. And I came across this super cute uh, Mitsubishi Delica. Never seen anything quite like it and just like felt the same way about it as I did when I first saw the double decker bus. And so we chatted about what it might be like for her to own that as her camper. It was just like so much fun walking through this small space, seeing what they were building out in Japan back in the mid nineties and how well it's all held up, how they fit everything into this tiny little space. So it's possible that we'll end up with this RV I don't know, in the next couple days in my driveway and maybe I'll do a little renovation on it and then start renting it out. Something else I just wanted to throw out there is that my son told me that when I hit 50 uh, subscribers on YouTube, he would make me a paper plaque. I'll make you a paper one for 50. For 100, I'll make you a wooden one and I'll think of other ones when you get higher. And let me tell you, I nailed it and he owes me a paper plaque. Also, just to be clear, he said that when I hit 100, he'll make me a wooden plaque. And I think I could be there by the end of the week, if I try hard, which I might do. Except for my wife is coming in for vacation, so maybe I won't. We'll see. Thank you for subscribing. And a reminder that I'm not sponsored by Alaska Airlines, but I'd like to be.